Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jantz, and this is Prime News. So our first story of the day, the lead story of Prime News, is an update on Diablo 3 for Switch. So you remember last week we put up a report about how there was a tweet from Blizzard that had a light switch cover uh, that kind of lit up and turned off uh, with a switch worth it being turned on and off, on and off. And a lot of speculation was this was a tease for Diablo 3 and Switch. Now, uh, the first update to it is something we never actually covered, and that was that Blizzard gave an official response, a question about it, and they said that's silly that anyone's saying that it has anything to do with Switch. It was just a, a tweet they did for fun. Um, and I didn't really report on that or do an update on it before because I didn't buy it. I thought it was kind of BS if it, if it was up to me. Uh, and it seems like my thoughts might be true. Now, this is technically a rumor, uh, but you decide how much you want to believe the source. Uh, the source is Eurogamer. And they are now reporting. They aren't even calling this a rumor. They are coming flat out and saying this is true. Eurogamer is reporting that Diablo 3 is indeed coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, they said the official announcement for this is several months off. And you know what else is several months off? E3. I guarantee you that this is, so right now at least, being planned for a semi-big announcement at E3. Again, it's another old game port, so how big of an announcement is it really? I think a bigger announcement is just that, look, now Blizzard's supporting this platform. First Bethesda, now Blizzard. What other Western studio is next? And when are we... And, and like, it, it started... Bethesda started with an older game like Skyrim and is now bringing, you know, like, Doom. And they brought Doom and Wolfenstein New Colossus. Eventually, we might get a day and date game that's released on all platforms and Switch at the same time. Hopefully, this is a sign for Blizzard. You know, I know a lot of people want Hearthstone. They want... Uh, so, some other stuff, and uh, it is what it is, but hopefully this is just like the starting point. Hey, we're starting with Diablo. We'll see how that does. Bring more after the fact. Um, but anyways, that, that's what they say. Uh, they do note that they that their sources were not sure if Reaper of Souls and Rise of the Necromancer expansions are included in this, although Eurogamer did note it would be weird for them not to be. There's no, you know, they, they've included these expansions and ports to other platforms before, so uh, just because there's no news on it right now doesn't mean it's not happening. Uh, you know, we're months away from it being announced, so uh, yeah, it'll probably be released this holiday or something like that. Uh, if I had to guess. Now, again, Rumor, 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 truckloads of salt. Uh, I'm going to tend to lean towards Eurogamer here. I know Eurogamer does not always get everything they report on correct. Uh, they have gotten a lot of stuff with Switch correct, but there's some stuff they've stated in the past that hasn't come to pass yet. Maybe it will. Uh, but what I will note here is I love Blizzard games. I love them a ton. I have played every single game they have ever released, including Diablo 1 and 2, but not 3. I've never bought three. I've never loaded up three. I've never owned it. I've never done anything with it. All the StarCraft games, the WarCraft games, including World of WarCraft, um, and all that stuff, Overwatch and Hearthstone. Like, I've played all of them. I'm not going to say I've played all of them extensively. Uh, Hearthstone is an example. I've just played a little bit. I haven't really dove deep and spent dozens and dozens of hours to, to understand the full intricacies. In in intricacies? Yeah, int that's the word. I'm intricacies of uh, how that card game works. But... I will say that I love Blizzard content. They are one of my favorite Western studios. And uh, them along with Bethesda are kind of like my um, more, the beginning of the Western studio support that I want on Switch, right? Uh, I, I, there are certain IPs I want from EA. There's a, a lot of stuff I actually want from Ubisoft as well. But Bethesda and uh, Rockstar Games and 2K and uh you know tossing in blizzard that's really the trifecta of the huge western studios i want to see on switch so i'm hoping that this is true i'm gonna believe it because i want it to be true um, but again it's up to you if you want to believe that story uh it's gonna be interesting to see how pricing works on the game i'm hoping it's not too expensive might be a little bit more expensive because of the cartridge factor because assuming there'll be a physical version um but even then i'm hoping it's not a 60 dollar game uh like skyrim was i feel like that was a mistake but speaking of pricing man our second story get ready for this i'm gonna have a little bit of a rant here um deals with donkey kong tropical freeze coming to switch now donkey kong tropical freeze as we know is coming to switch uh it's coming with a new character named funky kong nintendo on the box arts actually calling it a new funky kong mode but if you know anything about donkey kong tropical freeze that's not like that's not how it works like, like each character in uh, in Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze isn't a mode. 
It's just a, a character with unique abilities that changes how you play a stage. Uh, they have said there's no new levels coming, no new stages, no new worlds. So I, I don't know why they're calling it a mode. I think it's a little uh, misleading in the marketing, Nintendo. I'm just saying. Just say so you're adding a new character. Anyways, um, beyond that, uh, what's interesting about it is a bunch of retailers have now started to put up pricing for the game that releases on May 4th. And that is, unsurprisingly... Fifty nine ninety nine, just like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, just like uh, we know Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is going to be. And I am now um, of the mindset of many of you that these Wii U ports, and, and just gaming ports in general on Switch, but Wii U ports, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that specifically because Nintendo controls the pricing on that stuff, is too expensive. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze in wake of the release of Kirby Star Allies and eventually this Yoshi game coming soon uh, should not be $59.99. It's not a brand new game. They're adding a brand new character. Like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I, I understood the $60 price because they scrapped an entire multiplayer mode and actually added a new mode to the game. Not just like new characters, a new mode, and then they unlocked all the characters and all the tracks and stuff right away uh, for anyone who had it on Wii, on, uh, on Wii U. But for Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, they're just giving us a new character to play around with, and it's a highly requested character and one a lot of people want to play with, and I understand that, but is that character worth a premium? And what is that premium? You know, what's Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze worth to most people on Wii U these days? You know, 20 bucks maybe? Uh, and I understand you're not going to charge $20 for Wii U ports, especially of games that Nintendo values highly, like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. But I don't think, like, I understand having a higher price on the Wii U ports than a lot of people want because of the cartridge, and that cartridge, in, you know, in turn is going to make the digital price a little bit more expensive. But beyond that, I don't think Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze should cost more than 40 bucks. In fact, I don't think any... Wii U ported game that was exclusive to Wii U should be more than $40 on the platform, regardless if it was a Nintendo or a third party. That's right, Bayonetta 1 and 2 should only be $40. Now, actually, if you work out, um, you know, because if you buy one game and, uh, like, uh, digitally, if you buy one game, you get a discount code for the other, and it turns out that, you know, it, it does work out to Bayonetta 1 and 2 if you buy both, being 40 bucks. But, um, so again, I guess I guess they're kind of doing that sort of, but it's only if you buy both do you get that kind of de- whatever. My point here is um, that I think Nintendo is overcharging, and they're doing it because they know they can get away with it. Uh, I understand from Nintendo's point of view where where their where their mindset is at. Uh, the Wii U audience is dinky when it comes to gaming. As much as I would love to have 13.5 million subscribers on this channel. And uh, that would make my day. And, uh, you know, we get millions upon millions of views on every Prime News and everything we do. Our live streams might be the biggest on the platform and blah, 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 blah. Uh, we put Etika to shame, probably. Etika will be chasing us instead of us chasing Etika during our uh, our uh, adult time on Prime Time. But uh, <laughs> that, that aside, I have to say that... Um, 13.5 million in the gaming sphere is really, really small when it comes to system sales. And Nintendo doesn't view... Essentially what Nintendo is saying by releasing these games at 59.99 and then trying to give us new content to give an excuse for Wii U owners to buy the game is that they don't have any respect for their core audience that bought a Wii U. Now, they are a business. They're, look, they're looking at this from the business side only and the business side only is that look that 13.5 million people did not make us a, su- a success we are selling this as a brand new title to switch owners that never owned a wii u because they feel a majority of the switch audience never bought a wii u but you know why a majority of the switch audience never bought a wii u because a lot of the wii u audience which were previously or maybe even currently if they you know or, or whatever are, are some of your most loyal fans and I was one of those one, those fans, and I feel a little insulted, even as a Switch owner uh, that owned a Wii U, that Nintendo wants to charge fifty nine ninety nine uh, at a time when Kirby Star Allies is only fifty, and that's a literal brand new exclusive two D side scrolling game. I understand that Tropical Freeze might be on another level, um, and I get that. To me, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is the greatest two D side scrolling platform game of all time. Yes, I've heard you people telling me Celeste is better. Um, I haven't played Celeste yet, so I can't make any vouching for or against that. I know I have already. That's just my fandom coming out. Reality is, I can't tell you if Celeste is better, but from my money, right now, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze is the best, or uh, maybe the second best is Celeste. I don't know. But reality is 
that just because it's critically acclaimed and uh, using one of your core things, I mean, Kirby games get critically acclaimed as well and use one of your core core uh, mascots and stuff. So I, I honestly don't get how a brand new game could cost 50 but a Wii U port costs, you know, $59.99. I'm sorry, but Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, even even if even if you want to argue that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is worth the $59.99, not only because you got away with the price point, look how much sales you've gotten for that game, but because uh, of the new mode. Well, the thing is, is Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze doesn't have the same kind of additional content being added to it as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, I'm sorry, is not as big of a game as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze would be considered a B-tier game in comparison to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so it shouldn't even cost the same as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in the first place, but whatever, I'll, I'll give give you a pass for wanting to consider that game to be a full triple-a game but now we're talking about a game that's years old um we're not talking about you know bethesda here charging 60 bucks for uh, skyrim again uh they seem to have done that several times over and over the history of re-releasing that game uh but we're talking about nintendo here uh milking their consumers knowing they can get away with it and, and reality is that I understand Nintendo's business side because they're going to get away with these price points. Uh, we're going to lap it up. I mean, I'm not buying Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. I might buy it at 40 but uh, so they kind of maybe lost a customer in me, and I'm someone that loves that game. But overall, there's going to be enough people that buy it at 60 to make Nintendo justified for doing it. So business-wise, it is a very smart decision for them to set the precedent that all Wii U ports are going to be $59.99. Um, but I also think that they might see a boost in maybe even an extra million in sales per game uh, if they drop the price down to 40 and then do the math. Does that make up for the $20 loss on all the other copies? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a mathematician or an accountant over here. Uh, Nintendo can maybe crunch those numbers. But I, I just feel like even if Nintendo, th this is how you know that Nintendo doesn't care about their consumers. Because um, from an emotional perspective, Nintendo should realize that their most faithful fans bought the Wii U. They feel burned by the Wii U. Some of them have bought a Switch and they're happy with it, but they're feeling burned now that they, when they want to get the, their favorite games from, uh, from from Wii U and Switch, they have to rebuy them, which some are even willing to forgive you for because you didn't have a universal account system before. But now they're like, yeah, but um, so about rebuying them, why are we paying full price three, four, five years later? Um, 40 bucks. I'm telling you. $40 is a sweet point that still puts it at the same price as what a brand new 3DS game is. I think all of us can kind of sort of stomach. I know a lot of us would like to have it 20 bucks or under. I get that, but cartridges are more expensive, new platform porting. I get it. It's not, this isn't free to do. Um, so 40 bucks, I think, is a fair price uh, for any Wii U exclusive game that was originally 60 bucks on the platform. Just my take. Nintendo's probably not going to care, but I'm actually interested what you guys think about this down in the comments below. And uh, so our third story for today is kind of a twofold thing because one is that Kotaku and several other places have confirmed that Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is the next Call of Duty game coming out this year. So with Kotaku and many, many places, it's not just Kotaku, IGN, so many places are now confirming that this is a thing. Uh, there's even an, uh, a clip of James Harden, who is likely being sponsored by Call of Duty and probably going to appear in some commercials, uh, wearing a Call of Duty Black Ops 4 <laughs> hat to the game last night. Uh, yeah, he Black Ops 4 is coming. And why that matters for us is because Somebody who I am not, I've never heard of before actually, uh, Direct Feed Games on Twitter, has come out and said, I previously stated I would share news to celebrate the Switch's first birthday. As promised, here is some info. After talking with several sources, I can now share with confidence that Call of Duty will come to Switch in 2018. Now, you might be asking yourself, who is Direct Feed Games? Well, for starters, uh, I found out from YouTuber Player Essence, who did a, a report on this earlier, that uh, his name is Nate. So, I'm Nate, he's Nate. You can always trust the Nate, because Nate is great. Okay. Moving on, on that lame comparison. I have no idea who he is. Uh, he's a he's on Twitter. Uh, he says he does 1080p and 60 FPS uh, frames per second direct feed game clips. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. You can check out that kind of stuff. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description. But what, more importantly, I'm going to put a link to his tweet. And normally, I, you know, just like the guy named Marcus Sellers, who I've had many people come to me, and on this story in particular, someone's going to mention me, that, oh, Marcus Sellers actually said that this was coming to Switch 2. Um, the dealio is that with Marcus Sellers, I don't know of him either. However, Direct Feed Games... 
Uh, I am going off of player essence on this. Uh, player essence in his video on this is vouching for him. He has had contact with him. I trust player essence. Therefore, I trust what he has to say about direct feed games and this Nate fellow who he has personally talked to a few times and apparently has gotten a ton of things correct on Switch. In fact, I am now going to be following direct feed games more closely uh, to see what other rumors they might get you know, potentially correct in the future. We obviously don't know if this one is. As for the importance of Call of Duty coming to the platform, well, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a big deal, obviously, uh, but we'll see uh, what happens. Uh, I'm assuming this will be something that gets announced at E3. Uh, that's kind of when they announce Call of Duty anyway, so a big E3 announcement. Uh, hopefully day and date. That's the big thing for me is day and date release, please. Full version. Uh, hopefully approved for Nintendo's voice chat app. <laughs> it's funny how I have to hope. Um, but, yeah, that's, that, that, that's a big deal. So I'm actually going to end this Prime News, just bringing up a topic from yesterday, and that is the My Nintendo Rewards program. Uh, there's a lot of people that voiced that they were upset with the My Nintendo Rewards program and the gold point values and the and the pennies. And some people said when they go on the Switch eShop to spend their gold points uh, that they can't even spend all of them on a single game. Some of the games, they, they're limited. And, you know, say you have 1,500 uh, <laughs> gold points, you figure, okay, that's 15 bucks off Kirby Star Allies. And you go to buy it, and then, the game, you know, they only let you spend 700 or something. It's only getting 7 bucks off. Which, if that's true, it's weird. I haven't experienced it yet. Um, I've only purchased one game with my gold points, and it let me pay for the entire game, but it was a smaller indie game, uh, so it might not be something that's a major concern for some of you guys. But uh, what I will say is uh, setting that aside, since I haven't verified that because I don't have enough gold points to verify it, um, it... <laughs> I'm appreciative that Nintendo has a rewards program. Let, let, let's just start there. Um, Sony does not have one. Microsoft does not have one. Steam does not have one. Nintendo is under no obligation to give us a rewards program. And for anybody, anybody clamoring, I wish Club Nintendo was back. Club Nintendo is better. We're never going to get a Club Nintendo again. Let, let's clarify. Club Nintendo's glory days were SNES, N64, and uh, GameCube days. We forward it really started to topple down. I know there were still some good stuff, but it really started the trend of basically becoming a digital platform. Um, and you can even argue that di the digital platform of Club Nintendo was better. I understand that. Uh, and we need to give my Nintendo time to grow into itself. But what I will say is that if you are going to offer a rewards program, at least offer one that feels valuable to the consumers. Um, let me give you some issues I have. Uh, and I'm going to compare this to other rewards programs that exist for gamers. Amazon Prime is a rewards program. Uh, it, I mean, it gives you a, lot, a, a bunch of benefits, you know, from Amazon, like the Prime movies and the music uh, that you can do for free. So you, you don't even need to have like Google Music. You can just you use uh, Amazon Music um, and all that stuff. Uh, and, and discounts and two-day shipping and blah, blah. But what's really cool for gamers and why you should get Amazon Prime uh, if you're a gamer and you shop online on Amazon is uh, you get discounts on games. Uh, when games, when, when game peripherals are restocked, like when Switch was being restocked, uh, they were selling it first to Amazon Prime members and all that great stuff. And you always get all the pricing changes that every other Amazon Prime member gets. Uh, it's just really, really neat, but it's not a, a rewards point system. It's just, look, we're just going to give you this stuff because we can, because you are a gamer that is part of Amazon Prime. We want to entice you to maintain your Amazon Prime membership. Okay, that's fine. But the second... Uh, program we're going to talk about um, really blows the water even off of that, and that is obviously the Gamers Club at Best Buy. Probably the best rewards program. Every brand new game is cheaper. Bonuses on trade-ins. Uh, you can return games, I think, within a week or 10 days or whatever it is. I'm not actually a Gamers Club member. This is what I've been told. I and actually end up getting a vast majority of your money back and then put that towards another game. Uh, it, it's really, really crazy uh, how that program works and how they're making it work, but it's working for them. It's an affordable program. Um, and it's definitely something that I suggest people look into if you have a Best Buy around. However, I think Nintendo's rewards program, because it deals with a point-based system, is more comparable to the power-up reward system at GameStop. Now, I am a GameStop power-up rewards member. In fact, uh, they have two new membership tiers at GameStop. Let uh, me uh, get out my, my card here. So, I am an Elite Pro member. 
All right. They just launched. I think they launched this this year. I can't remember. Um, but basically, I get extra points uh, over a normal rewards member on stuff. And the, sometimes, uh, like on their pro day, they had a pro day earlier. Like there's some exclusive item and items and discounts for elite pro members. It's like it, it actually it's a way for them to get more money out of people on the pro membership. That's really what it's about. Because I think it used to be ten bucks a year, and this membership's twenty. I haven't paid for a membership in probably a decade. Um, I always get enough points per year to, to just re up my membership. But but the point is that they only have a single currency with their system. It's just all the power up reward points. And yes, you get like twenty points per game or per dollar on, on what you spend in store on new products. And uh, yes, it does lead up to like to get sixty bucks or whatever to buy a whole entire game. It it, it being you know four, five, six grand, just like it is on the Switch. You know where you, you depending on digital or physical, whatever the case may be, you might have to spend four, five, six grand to get sixty dollars in currency. Assuming they let you even use the sixty dollars in gold points, and you get that within a year. I mean, that's a lot of money to spend in a year on gaming. But some people are crazy and do spend that kind of money. Um, but even if uh, even if you did that. The thing is, is I don't spend that kind of crazy money at GameStop, yet I, multiple times per year, already this year, by the way, I have 32,000 points earned just this year on my Power Up Rewards membership. And you want to know why? It's because it's a single currency. With the My Nintendo program, my problem is that they have two currencies in the first place. You have your platinum coins, you have your gold coins. Gold coins are what you get for buying things. Platinum coins are what you basically get for doing anything else. You get achievements because um, some games have achievements. Although some people are saying they have issues with the new Kirby demo achievement, whatever the case may be with that. I'm, I obviously haven't done enough research. But um, anything, you do surveys, uh, you do little things on, on the thing, on their show or on, on their show, on their website, whatever. You can gain. Like, I actually have way more platinum coins than I do gold coins. But my issue is that those are separate currencies. On GameStop, you can do surveys. Uh, you, they have special days where like you get triple value on trade-ins, and that also applies to the points you get on your Power Up Rewards card. Uh, so like, I take advantage of all of that, and I end up only spending maybe $1,000 on gaming stuff a year at GameStop. And in return for that, I end up getting like 50,000 to 100,000 points per year. Um, just because I do all the uh, surveys, I do all this other stuff uh, that gets me the additional points. And I feel like if Nintendo would just combine it into a single currency and let you use that entire currency, I probably wouldn't have as much to complain about. Um, but then, as it is, Nintendo is making it so you could only use gold points. You can't combine them uh, or convert them. And unfortunately, the gold points are just... It's such a low value. It, it it feels just like with the pricing on like Tropical Freeze. It's like almost like a slap in the face to your loyal members. And I understand we should be appreciative because Nintendo doesn't have to do this at all. And I am appreciative that they're at least putting in the effort. Um, but the way it's going, it almost feels like customers will be less upset if they just stop trying. Uh, the thing about a customer loyalty program like my Nintendo, is it supposed to make your customers feel valuable? This, to me, when I feel less valuable to Nintendo on Nintendo's platform than I feel as a Nintendo customer at GameStop, on uh, GameStop's rewards program, that's a problem to me. You should at least be on par with one of the industry leaders in rewards programs. So... And the thing is, GameStop even recently changed. You used to be able to get a bunch of physical items like GameStop too, like you could at Club Nintendo, and now it's all digital currency, which, granted, you can still convert it to GameStop digital currency, then you can go buy those things off their website. Nintendo doesn't really have a way to do that because they don't... By the way, Nintendo, you need to let people shop at the Nintendo New York store online. I don't know why you don't allow that to happen. I think you're missing out on a ton of revenue making people go through Amazon or eBay or other places to buy official, officially licensed merchandise when you already have an in like an in-person retail store come on how hard is it to launch an online store there's one i mean if you guys are a pokemon fan you guys have heard of pokemon center right go buy official merchandise and pokemon stuff off of poke center why isn't there a nintendo online store for that i'm not yeah, whatever i know i know you can like go on the website and, and, and like their their official websites and buy like used uh you know or refurbished systems and stuff like that but that's not the same as like merchandise so whatever anyway Maybe Nintendo is just afraid to do all that because maybe there's a whole lot of logistics. I don't know. All I know is if Pokemon could do it, Nintendo could do it. I just I, I feel like they just aren't valuing um, your money as much as they should, especially when you spend sixty bucks on Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and Hyrule Warriors and Mario Kart Eight Deluxe and uh, whatever other 
you know, Wii U games are coming. Which is probably going to be all of them. Being at a 1 and 2. Oh boy. Alright folks, I think that's going to do it. I am the Tender Jets from the Tender Prime. And if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And as always folks, I will catch you in the next one. Uh, because I'll always have hope. Right here beside me, I need a fresh stop, but I'm holding it in me. I've been wondering why I can't decide what to do with the rest of my life. Hope has always been there for me. We both know that friends don't come easy.